Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Mount Ash Photography. Join me tonight as we're going deep into the constellation of Cygnus on a full moon night. Tonight, let's go after the Crescent Nebula. Now we're really going to be putting things to test tonight because one, we do have a full moon in place, which, you know, is quite taboo for any astrophotography whatsoever, but at least with some narrowband, you can get away with it. And clear skies as of lately has been very hard to come by. So anytime it is clear, I like to at least try and capture something, maybe like a star cluster, or in this case tonight, a nice bright nebula right in the center of the swan. Of the northern cross and i'm sure that you've seen from my previous video we have the foundation ready for the observatory to be built sometime within this month got the floor all nice and ready and the pier well, i mean was already there beforehand so this is what we're going to be working with tonight with this full moon and unfortunately you know even though it is clear another challenge awaits more wildfire smoke now I picked this target in particular, one, because it is a crowd favorite for the summer months, and then now we're finally entering nebula season as of June now. And this one is just a wonderful target to go back to. I have captured this nebula many times before, but I've never done it in monochrome since I've only been a one-shot color user for the last five years until this year is when I got my first monochrome camera. And then now with the bigger telescope here, the Newtonian from Skywatcher, this should make for a very wonderful image ahead with a lot of detail and that's gonna be the plan for tonight. Now the Crescent Nebula kind of looks like a kidney <laughs> inside of the human body as a matter of fact, just because of the weird shape that it has. And it also is responsible for very strong hydrogen alpha gases and oxygen three. And those are gonna be the two band passes that we're gonna be working with because traditionally you can do SHO on this target. I'm just not a big fan of the colors for this. HOO definitely is my all time favorite when it comes to the Crescent Nebula. And it's all because of that one wolf rayet star in the center of this nebula that gives it this iconic shape. Now it seemed a little bit taller with the platform for the observatory basically in place. So now I'm almost about eye level to where the telescope is. But tonight for the Crescent Nebula, we will be using the Skywatcher Quattro 150P, which is a six inch Newtonian telescope with an extremely fast focal ratio of F3.5, which puts it at a focal length of about 600 millimeters with the reducer that's in with it too, with a coma corrector, puts it down to about 517, which should give this a nice field of view for this target. And the camera choice is going to be the newly released ZWO ASI 585MM Pro, which is a monochrome camera. Inside of the filter wheel here, I'm gonna be using two filters from Antlia, known as the Antlia Edge which are 4.5 nanometer bandpass filters, which is perfectly fine for my Bortle 4 to 5 skies, but it will present a little bit of a challenge with the full moon though, but it's not a challenge that we cannot overcome. Also gonna be using the ZWO CAA because with this much tighter you know, field of view for this smaller sensor camera, I wanna make sure that it's at least oriented the right way and with the camera angle adjuster, it just makes it so much easier. And with the recent uh, beta update to the ASI Air version 2.4, which actually puts a lot of you know emphasis and you know new updates to the CAA that make our lives much easier because I've had problems with this before with it spinning all the way and just keeps going in one direction. But now we have it isolated that we can only do like 180 degrees and it can actually go back to the home position and stuff too. So that's a nice little uh, 
user-friendly feature that we have with this. Controlling everything is going to be the ZWO ASI Air, like I mentioned, but there is another box on top of here now from SV Boney, which I'm gonna have another video for that because this rig here uses a lot of power. So that gives you a little bit of a hint of what we're gonna be talking about in the next video after this. But guiding everything is going to be with these SV Bunny 40 millimeter guide scope which is 160 millimeters, perfectly fine for this setup here. Guide camera wise, gonna be using the ASI 678 mono, whole complete package here with the AM5 mount on top of my homemade pier. So now we're just gonna be patiently waiting for nightfall to do a little bit of some polar alignment since I did have the cover on this today because it was a little bit windy and they were doing some stuff out in the fields. Just didn't want my mirrors dirty, but we're gonna wait for nightfall get everything all set up, head right to the ASI Air app and set our plan for tonight. Now that it's fully dark out, we are already inside the ASI Air app. Already started off uh, imaging on this target here, but I wanted to show you what the uh, plan is going to be for tonight since I'm only going to be shooting two filters, hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. We're going to see how the plan is set up inside the ASI Air app. Hit the hamburger icon here. I did Messier 10 earlier as I was waiting for this target to be rising up above my trees. Got that completely done. So that's going to be a nice little treat to uh, edit later on. But heading over towards NGC 6888, which is the Crescent Nebula. And looking at the Sky Atlas, we can zoom in right across areas of Cygnus. And you can see... Perfect field of view for this, especially once I rotated it with the uh, ZWO CAA. And we're going to have a nice view of this target. And then going into the sequence itself, I'm going to be switching off between every hour with Hydrogen Alpha and then Oxygen 3. 300 second exposures using the Unity gain for this camera at 252. It's what I've been normally using for uh, narrowband. If I try to use 252 when it is using broadband, I don't really have good results, unfortunately. So I put it down to like 101. But this is what's going to be running through back and forth throughout the night. And we should be having our exposure here. As you can see, yeah. We got the Crescent Nebula perfectly right there in the center. It is upside down, but that will be fixed, you know, further on down in processing. But everything is looking quite nicely. And we're going to let this run through the night and hopefully have a nice image to process. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that we do not get hit with any clouds throughout the night. So I'm going to let this run through. I'm going to stack all the data when inside of PixInsight, and I will see you there. Now, real quick, before we get into the processing side of things, we got to talk about our video sponsor today, and it's me, Alan Astroprints. Are you ready to take your astrophotography to the next level? At Alan Astro Prints, we've got the perfect 3D printed solutions to enhance your stargazing experience. Welcome to Alton Astro Prints on Etsy, your go-to shop for custom 3D printed accessories designed specifically for astrophotography. We know that capturing the beauty in the night sky requires more than just a great camera. It requires the right tools and setup. From cable management solutions for your deep sky cool cameras to mounts for your mini computers or accessories that are designed to make your astrophotography setup smoother and more efficient. Each product is crafted from durable PETG material built to withstand the extremes of hot, cold, and dew-filled nights, but also designed to handle the toughest conditions so you can focus on capturing those breathtaking celestial moments without worrying about your gear. Whether you're an amateur stargazer or a seasoned astrophotographer, Alan Astro Prince has a little something for everyone as we continue to grow our selection. Explore a range of accessories and discover how we can enhance your night sky adventures. Visit us today at Alan Astro Prince on Etsy and find your perfect accessory to elevate your astrophotography experience. Let us know how we can help you reach the stars. So yes, please do me a favor, visit alanastroprince.etsy.com for all your astrophotography accessories. I have lots when it comes to cable management I can custom make 
stuff for you. You just have to send a message. I have plenty of accessories and upgraded, you know, filter management stuff for the C Stars, the S50s, and the S30s. And brand new, I have some Skywatcher Quattro upgrades that I have made and more to come down the line. Now that we're on the computer, I went through and stacked everything and we ended up with about seven hours total of exposure time. Didn't have to deal with clouds. The smoke was uh, very minimal, surprisingly. And we got four hours of hydrogen alpha data and three hours with oxygen. And even during the full moon, it actually turned out pretty darn good. First thing we're gonna look at is the hydrogen alpha data. And you can see, of course, around this region in Cygnus, filled with hydrogen gas. And this target in particular is looking very, very nice, even though it's upside down, but later on down in the processing, I flipped it up the right way. I'm just gonna speed through uh, like what I've done with this image here because I'm gonna have another video here relatively soon about how to process HOO with monochrome cameras. So that'll be more in depth of you know the processing techniques that I like to use. But looking at the background nebulosity, it looks you know fantastic. Definitely, you know, you can pick a spot inside of Cygnus and just start capturing with Hydrogen Alpha and you will be surprised at what you are able to see. Stars look great after done some dynamic background extraction, some blur exterminator, but the overall detail in with the Crescent Nebula itself is amazing for this. And it's definitely because one, my seeing was actually pretty darn good and with the smaller pixels with the 5A5 mono down to 2.9 microns, I mean, we're able to get a lot more of this intricate detail and this looks great right off the bat. What even surprised me more was with the only three hours of oxygen data. Now, inside of Cygnus, oxygen is kind of hard to come by. You can see in the background, you don't really see much of anything. Well, at the same time, we were, we were also dealing with a full moon, but I was actually, you know, pleasantly surprised when I actually saw I got a decent amount of the uh, the oxygen data here inside of the actual you know core because of this one star right here that wolf rayet star even got some of the faint extensions up top of the crescent nebula now this would have been a lot better of course you know without the moon but for three hours full moon sure looks great so after I've gone through, you know, my prerequisite steps of doing, you know, dynamic background extraction, done some blur exterminator, did some linear fit, especially with the oxygen channel, because it is a weaker signal compared to hydrogen alpha, so we're at the same, you know, brightness. Went through with some LRGB combination, which I keep all of them. I do hydrogen alpha in the luminance channel, just to kind of add a little bit of extra uh, punch to it red hydrogen alpha and in the green and blue i did both oxygen for those combine them together you get something like this which you know it's kind of like a dullish or like reddish kind of like an auburn color and you can't really see much of the you know oxygen data so you definitely have to work with it a lot more to kind of bring out all of the colors by doing some mat uh like some color mask doing some curves some saturation and in the end this is what we came up with with the final product Look at all the hydrogen gas in the background here with all that wonderful red. And then zooming in really close, we brought out a lot more of that oxygen structure, especially up at the top here. And we actually have a lot of oxygen that is, you know, kind of looks 3D in a way from this photo because of how it like wraps around the entire center of where this wolf rayet star is. We got some really good contrasted data and some great colors here on the left side and all in all this came out to be a wonderful image in the end so when someone tells you you know don't image during a full moon don't let that stop you you can still get some really good you know data from this you just gotta you know put a little bit of extra work into it to get a nice result and I'm definitely happy with this. This is actually as good if not better than some of my one shot color uh, captures for this target from the last I would say year or two since I've 
worked on the Crescent Nebula and with half of the exposure time, just monochrome, man. I don't know why I didn't do this before, but I hope you enjoyed the video today. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We just passed 3,000 subscribers. I want to thank every single one of you. Be sure to check some of the affiliate links if, you know, some of the equipment that I use kind of piques your interest. You can get it, and if you use those links, it does help me out a little bit with no extra cost to you. Get a little bit of some commission when I, you know, if you go through those links. And be sure to check out Out in Astro prints my uh, small business online it's been a huge blessing after the past you know several months and we crossed over 12,000 sales something that i never expected to happen so thank you as always and thank you for being a supporter to this channel and my small business clear skies i'll see you in the next video cheers <laughs>